At the end of every series, there are two or three players that hit you in the face. I mean, there's many who've uh, who've done really well, who've at crucial points played key roles. But you know, at the end of a series, when you just shut your eyes and say, "Okay, for the names that come to mind," and then do a blog on those, there's three names that come to mind for me, and I'll go in one after the other. I'll start with Rohit Sharma. I'll be completely honest. And Rohit admitted that in that interview to Dinesh Karthik, where he thought when he was asked to open the batting, he thought it might be his last chance. But you know, Rohit Sharma is it's not meant to be bogged down, meant to be tied down, play straight, close to the body. Respect. No, Rohit has freedom. I was blown away. I will say this again. I was blown away by the manner in which Rohit Sharma denied himself the free stroking shots and in doing so, built an innings. I know there were a couple of pull shots that he played that he would have been disappointed by, maybe. But the discipline that Rohit Sharma showed, the manner in which he adapted to the shots, he just played close to the body. Occasionally, there would be that shot which he placed so well, but he left. He played close. He left. He played close. If I had told you that at one point his strike rate in the series would be 38-39, you would have said, "Go find somebody else. This is a guy who looks like Rohit. This is not Rohit Sharma." So the extraordinary transformation. In Rohit Sharma into a classical top order batsman. He's not. This is not a makeshift opener. This is not just a middle order batsman who's been asked to go and open the batting. In the most difficult of circumstances, he hung in there and looked like a proper Test match opening batsman. He looked like he'd done it all his life. I also think that there's a leader in Rohit Sharma that's even that's growing, that's that's flowering even now, and I can see that. I mean, he said in that interview with Dinesh Karthik. He talked about the kind of cricket education you have. He talked about how you must learn to respect the red ball. How the red ball is always going to be more difficult to play than the wide, but you must make your name there. Or oh, I absolutely enjoyed watching Rohit Sharma as a pure old-fashioned Test match batsman. So, one name that comes straight away is Rohit Sharma. And you might wonder why Rohit Sharma's name comes first ahead of Joe Root, simply because of the Rohit Sharma we know and the Rohit Sharma we saw. Now, Joe Root. One of the criticisms leveled against Joe Root was that he makes 50, doesn't convert them to 100, and then we saw the numbers. England is the most difficult place in the world to convert 50s to 100. But he didn't have that problem. He hit three here. He hit three on the winter tour. We saw him when he came to India. We saw him in Sri Lanka first of all when he was sweeping everything, and we said, "Yeah, the old English way." Came to Chennai. He swept there. Got a big hundred. When Root does well, England do well because rarely will you see one man propping up an entire side. The way Joe Root did on those winter tours, when Root dipped with the pressures of captaincy on challenging wickets, England didn't dip. England capitulated. Now you come here and you look at Joe Root, and such a pleasant batsman to watch. I mean, there are some other batsmen they score runs, and you say, "Yeah, well played." When Root scores runs, you just want to watch because it was so pleasant. I mean, this year Root has had at one point, I think, had made 35 percent of all the runs that England had scored, eight, nine hundred runs more than the next guy. I just think that if you take away the captaincy from Root, I don't know if he's like Virat Kohli, whether he really wants it, whether he enjoys it. He might score more runs, but to watch Joe Root bat today—I mean, I, I watched Graham Gooch in my first series in England, and he just dominated. He was going boom, 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 like he was slapping little children around, you know, like the senior prefect slapping the junior kids around. Yeah, that's okay. But Root was classic. I enjoyed him. Two batsmen, but there was one bowler. I've been fascinated over the years watching Jasprit Bumrah. And while we're having a little conversation, uh, oh, someone said, "You know what's great about Bumrah? He goes through gears. He's suddenly up. He's suddenly down. He's bowling a certain speed. Suddenly he'll bowl something else. He'll look at the conditions and say, 'Ah, okay,' and he'll bowl a, a, a slower ball, uh, uh, sort of slowish off cutter, and get a batsman to change to uh, to break a partnership. Just look at the different ways in which Bumrah got wickets. Pop sharp in dipper at pace." Maybe a bit of reverse sharp in dipper at pace. That was a pop wicket. Besto, a near unplayable yorker. How did he get Joe Root out? Pitch and leave. Pitch and leave. Third delivery, completely different from all the others. He's getting Root nicking off two or three times. And then that Robinson thing that changed the game, where he bowled a slower ball from round the wicket. He's got four different ways at key moments to get players out. And that is what makes Bumrah very special. A hundred wickets at an average of twenty-two. I know he's played away more. He's played less in India. All that is fine. But Bumrah is a gem, absolute jewel for India.
those are the three. I closed my eyes and said, what are the names that come first to my mind? And those were the three. Thank you.